I was looking at the DualSense Edge a few days ago. There is still no calibration support for it. And it did occur to me, there is a possibility that Sony didn't include calibration support in the controller's firmware. With the regular DualSense, the controller has to be assembled and then calibrated. That is not the case with the DualSense Edge. With the Edge, the stick modules have to have the calibration information or some form of calibration in the module itself. And I noticed the Edge stick modules are back in stock, so I thought I would order a couple and see what's in them. See if I can tell if there is any hope of calibration for the DualSense Edge. I was thinking that the cheapest way to do these stick modules would be to have a joystick and a memory chip that holds the calibration values, and I hope that is what I find. Three screws hold a bottom plate in place. Well, for some reason, they decide to melt some plastic to keep the plate from coming off. Let me see if I can get a better view of the problem. Why the melted plastic? Isn't three screws enough? I'll just cut the melted tab off. And that releases the bottom plate. Let me put the knife up so I don't poke myself with it. Knobs won't clear all the plastic, so I'll pull the joystick from the knob. Looks like a standard Alps joystick. Potentiometers are a different color compared to the ones in the regular DualSense. Of course, I haven't seen a new DualSense, so might be the same by now. The connector. Looks like 14 contacts. More than I was expecting. And that is more silicon than I thought would be in the thing. There is an 8-pin DFN package, and that is what I would expect to find a memory chip in. But the larger QFN chip, 28 or maybe 32 pins, looks like 32. Why something with so many pins? There are two switches, two potentiometers, and what is probably a serial memory chip? Seems way overkill. Well, that certainly complicates things. I'm going to have to do a bit of digging to see why a chip of that size is there. Kind of why I bought two of the stick modules. I figured I was going to have to take one apart to see how it's hooked up. So it's destruction time. Nothing special underneath the joystick. And the joystick is wired up just like the regular DualSense controller. There are 14 pins on the connector. Don't see but a few traces leaving the mounting pads. More surprises, I guess. I'm going to pull all the SMD parts off. So this is going to take a couple of hours, as I want to take them off intact. Without magnification, these 0201 parts look like tiny black specks. I'll see if I can get each one transferred to some tape for measurement. Getting the probes on them is another thing altogether, but I need the values. I have all the parts removed. Now comes the tedious and time-consuming process of seeing what connects to what. As another surprise, this seems to be a four-layer board. And on top of that, it has blind vias. Blind vias really increase the price of a prototype board. And it has to increase the price of a production board at least a tiny bit. The four layers I can understand for EMI reasons, but blind vias? That I find strange. This is the bottom of the PCB with no parts. The tiny red dots are marks for the vias that I can see. There are a lot of vias in pads that I can't see, but I know they are there. The number one indicates the number one pin on the connector in the schematic I drew. And if I fade in the top of the board, the top image is flipped to align with the bottom. So this would be what the top looks like if you were looking down through the bottom of the PCB. Can see there only looks like a few of the connector pads connected, but they are all used. I'm still amazed they would use such a PCB for what should be a cheap consumer item. Also, I didn't notice this little error here until I had drawn my schematic. So I think this might be pin 1 indicator for the connector. If it is, my numbering is opposite Sony's. I would like to point out this test point here. This is accessible through the plastic bottom plate of the stick module. And I would expect there is a reason for that. So this is the result. Maybe I haven't made too many mistakes with it. Let's start with the joystick section. The frame pins and two potentiometer pins connect to ground. Two other pins of the potentiometer are obviously the power to the potentiometers. This also connects to the joystick switch. Now this power is not connected to the power that supplies the two ICs. The C3 capacitor 
I have listed as 100 picofarad. It measured a little over 120 picofarad. That goes for all the caps I have listed as 100 picofarad. The center taps of the potentiometers have what measured as 30 picofarad caps on them. Not sure how accurate my measurements are, but they are very small values. One big thing to notice here is the center taps of the potentiometers are not connected to the 32 pin chip. They only connect to the 14 pin connector. When I saw that large of a chip, I thought maybe the AD converters were on this board and it might be digitally communicating with the controller. But sure wouldn't need 14 pins for that. And it turns out that is not the case. The extra switch here is just a switch and a couple of capacitors. I would expect all the small value caps, the 30 and 100 picofarad ones, are for EMI suppression. So the user input section of the stick module is basically completely separate from the two ICs in the circuit. There are three lines from the connector that go through 100 ohm resistors. I would expect those to be data and clock lines. And there are two lines that go through 100k ohm resistors. So I would expect those to be more level sense or set lines. And one pin from the connector supplies power to the two ICs, VCC listed in the schematic. I'm looking for a memory chip, so I see a memory chip. This 8 pin chip could easily be an I2C EE prom. Pins 1, 2, and 3 would be the address pins. And what would be the SDA and SCL pins connect to two of the signal lines from the connector. But I may be seeing what I want to see. It could be something else. The exposed test point connects to this 8 pin chip with a 4.7K ohm pull down resistor. So it could be an address set line. The code on the chip is 5BDK on the top line and 8431 on the bottom line. If anyone happens to find a chip with that ID code, please leave a comment. Now the 32 pin chip. Only a few of the pins connect to anything, and I really wonder what this chip does. Only two lines of writing on this chip. Top line is H2431F81, and the line under is A02. All three of the signal lines from the connector connect to this chip, plus one of the level lines. If you consider that there are two of these modules in the controller, and maybe one I2C bus connected to both, then one of the level lines makes perfect sense. One module will have a low level, and the other module will have a high level, and that will give a different address for each of the chips on the modules. My first thought for what this chip does is the darkest. Is Sony using some kind of encryption to make sure only a Sony stick module will work in the controller? A dark thought, but first thing that came to mind. Kind of a sad statement on the level of consumer electronics nowadays. I hope I'm just overlooking some other use for the chip. Again, any thoughts about what it might do, please leave a comment. I think I'm going to have to order a DualSense Edge. I'm going to need to take a look at the signals coming and going out of this thing. It's piqued my interest for sure. And that brings me to the last item, the connector. I didn't find one like this anywhere. I'm pretty sure it would be considered a floating board to board connector, and I would really like to find the mating part for this piece it would sure help in testing. The pitch is around 0.6 to 0.65 millimeters, and my best measurement puts it at 0.64 millimeters, so a pretty fine pitch. The back looks like this. There is a capital E in the center, and a one. I didn't notice that before. So the numbering in the schematic I made is backwards. I'll have to fix that in the future. If anyone happens to run across a connector like this, please leave a comment. Well, I still have hope for a calibration solution, but it may turn out that the solution is a device that the stick module connects to. Nothing in the module makes me think the controller can't calibrate it, but is there any advantage for Sony to do it? Next step is to make a PCB to mount the, what I think is a memory chip. Do some tests and see if that is what it is. And if so, what kind of data is on it? I wouldn't expect there to be much. Thank you for watching.